Welcome back to this special edition of Facing South Florida. We are spending the entire half hour talking to the new Speaker of the Florida House, Miami Lakes Republican, Jose Oliva. One of the very first issues the legislature will have to address is whether to allow a smokable form of medical marijuana. After voters overwhelmingly approved a constitutional amendment on medical marijuana in 2016, former Governor Rick Scott and the legislature did everything they could to block a smokable form of the drug. Governor Ron DeSantis has said he believes that was a mistake and has given the legislature two weeks to pass a bill allowing smokable marijuana or else he will take steps to push it forward. I asked Oliva if the House would indeed pass a smokable medical marijuana bill. Well, let me tell you what I support personally and then what, what, what we will do in the House in the interest of, uh, of trying to comply with an amendment. I, I don't believe that uh, there's no medicine that we know of that is smokable. Controlling the dosage of a, me of a medicine in smokable form uh, is, is not something that can, that can even be done. So there's a, there's, there's a challenge between what I think we have to pass because there's an amendment in place and what I would like to see. So take your, but your personal view cannot guide what you believe the amendment I don't, calls I don't, for. I don't get to decide on the question that I wish was before me. I have to decide on the question that is so before me. So how will you decide this question? Will you allow smokable marijuana? The, the House will pass a bill that incorporates smokable marijuana. Will you place the types of restrictions on it, though, that will make it almost impossible for people to get? For instance, going before a panel, Putting additional hurdles like maybe two or three or four doctors to have to sign off on it. You know, you can also construct a bill that, that makes it yeah. very difficult to, to implement as well. Yeah, so, so I think what you will see, and, and we'll have follow up after the bill starts moving, I think what you will see is a bill that no, that does not require multiple doctors, that increases cost and, and reduces access, uh, or has, had to, has people come before a panel. What we would like to do is if the people of Florida voted for this as a medicine, then I don't think it's unreasonable to treat it as a medicine. This is something that is going to be taken by children. I'd, the House will not support the, the smoking of marijuana for children. The, we, the studies are just not conclusive enough. Part of our bill will be an extensive study at the University of Florida, hopefully in conjunction with the other universities, to fully understand what are the effects of smoking marijuana. So you may differentiate that you may allow smokable marijuana for adults, but not for children under the, the age House, of 18. The House bill will, will allow smokable marijuana for adults. Okay. Let's talk about, uh, you were one of the primary sponsors on the bill that passed with regard to after Parkland, after the mm -hmm. tragedy in Parkland, setting up certain restrictions and red flag laws. Um, there's some concern that there may be efforts in the legislature this year to roll back some of those, some of those issues, whether it's, right, one of the, your bill moved the age to buy a long gun from 18 to 21, creating red flag laws, doing a number of things mm -hmm. like that. Do you think that there will be a serious effort or would you support rolling back any of those uh, those things that you passed in the in the original bill? Uh, no, I, I mean, I imagine how disingenuous it would be it would be of me to have been the sponsor of the bill. It was last year, but really it was just a few months ago. Mm -hmm. And then to now uh, write law to to repeal that either either you don't know there's going to be an effort to try to undermine well, sure, it. I mean, listen, members of the legislature are free to follow whatever bills they'd like sure. to file. I'm just from from my standpoint and, and from a leadership role, it would be disingenuous of me to to have. Have uh, crafted a bill, passed it through the House, and then come back and try to repeal parts of it. I don't. It would say it would either say something about my thinking then or my thinking now. How do you think the bill is working? For instance, the red flag laws. Do you think that they're working well? I, I don't believe that we're doing everything we can. I, I think we've spent a lot of money. We made a massive commitment in money. We we've started to create uh, at, at, a, at, a, at a good rate a mental health safety net. Uh, but I'm concerned. I'm concerned that in Broward County. County, where, where this terrible tragedy happened, as of December, when when the report came out, uh, they still did not yet have policies in place uh, that would have prevented this. I'm concerned that it has become an issue, uh, a political issue about guns, uh, as opposed to the safety of a school and how we truly keep our children safe. I, I think that, like a lot of issues. I guess highly politicized, but I don't feel uh, that we are significantly more safe 
than we were last year. One of the uh, issues that's going to come before the legislature is the question of whether or not the Guardian program, which allowed for certain people on campuses, non-instructional people, to be armed, to go through training and, and have, carry a weapon, this is likely to be try to be expanded to mm -hmm. include teachers having that option if they so choose and decide to go through the training. Do you support that? I do. I, I think, and that's what people don't understand. When we, we have images in our mind, and when someone says a teacher with a gun, you know, the first thing in your mind is your second grade teacher, Miss Murphy, and you thought, my goodness, you know, Mine was Miss Desi. Yeah, Miss Murphy couldn't possibly carry a gun. Well, Miss Murphy would have never passed the almost military-like training that it would have taken to have been deputized by the local sheriff to carry a gun. Miss Murphy couldn't have possibly con done the continuing education required or the continuing training to maintain that proficiency. Uh, now, Miss Murphy was my favorite teacher that I had the entire time I was in school. We loved her, but that would not be a person I'd see with a gun. Coach Aaron Feiss, who stood before an assailant with a weapon and guarded children from it. That man should have been armed on that day. The current, but the current bill would have allowed Coach Feist probably to be armed. Yes. The, 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 we're talking about expanding the bill to include teachers. You I would, I would expand it to anyone that can pass a rigorous physical and mental test, and and have the proficiency to be deputized by do a you, local sheriff. Do you worry that ha introducing more guns into schools may make schools less safe, though? I don't believe so because there's no, so nowhere that we introduce uh, more trained people with weapons do we have more gun violence. Where do we see education funding going this year? The governor seems to want to expand uh, school vouchers, what you would refer to as school choice programs. Mm -hmm. I think you're a proponent of that as well. Talk to me about where you see that going over the next 60 days. I think that our goal is to continue to move in a direction that has shown statistically undeniably to be a better system, and that is a system of choice. There are many traditional public schools that are doing well, and parents are happy to have their children there, and that should remain as an option. There are also public schools inside this state and some in our community that are failing. And those parents should be able to move those children into a different situation. And the money should follow that child. It seems easy enough in concept. What creates the complication of it, of course, is the politics. The idea that we want to dismantle public schools. I went to public schools myself. Two of them pretty good schools. One of them quite bad. I wish that I would have had the option to, at least during that middle school period, to have chosen another school. I wish my parents would have had the option. We couldn't. You, 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 it, is, it is completely unconscionable to tell someone, and, and, the, and the most affected are the people in my communities and in and, and all the inner cities, that this is a school you're assigned to, and even though the taxpayer is paying for your education, you will have to expend it there. I don't see how people can stand in the way, and less and less people are starting to stand in the way because they've seen the results of allowing a parent to move the money with that child to another facility. Moving that money, though, doesn't move the accountability. What accountability should there be on those private schools that are accepting state dollars? We don't. So you talk about schools that are failing mm -hmm. because they go through a testing program. That's right. There's no testing program for those for those private schools. We don't know if they're failing those kids. We also don't know what level of accountability there is in general. So how do you so it seems like you're creating a system where you're taking dollars from a system where there is at least some accountability and moving it into a system, a private system, where there's little to no accountability. Well I, I would say so little to no accountability again makes the assumption that the only accountability comes from the government. And and, and that is a paternalistic view of how we should run our societies. The accountability is the parent. If a, do you think that a parent that moves a child from a school that they are not progressing at to another school all of a sudden loses their ability to judge whether they're progressing in that school? There is accountability. But we have to stop thinking that we're here to solve everyone's problems. There are parents in place. They have the best interest of their child. This is their taxpayer dollars. And what we've seen from the time that Governor Jeb Bush first opened the first charter school in the state of Florida to today has been a a dramatic 
a dramatic fall in the amount of failing schools and an increase in our reading levels, both in third grade and our math levels. This is what we're seeing. There is a reason that charter schools continue to flourish. There's a reason that parents are making those choices, and it's because they work. There's, a, there's an issue. Miami-Dade County voters voted to uh, raise property taxes in order to um, uh, pay teachers more money in the, in the public school system. There seems to be an effort brewing in the legislature uh, to take some of that money and give it to teacher salary increases in the private school system. Well, so uh, do you no, support that? No, no, I, I don't support giving that money to teachers in a private school system. I support giving it to teachers whose funding comes from the public, and that is to say, a charter school is a public charter school. It is not a private school. A voucher system would allow you to take your money to a to a private school. That's a different case. The the voters of Dade County that are paying for this additional tax also have children in public charter schools. But the amendment, did, but the 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 measure that was voted on by the public did not make did not suggest that the money was going to leave the public school system and go into charter schools. But, but the charter schools are public schools. Give me the give me your definition of public. If the if if it is the public that is paying for a service then that is a public function and if there are teachers within that public service and the public has the public has said our teachers teaching our children with our tax dollars should be making more money and we're willing to tax ourselves further to do it how can one segregate a teacher at a traditional public school from a teacher at a charter public school it just doesn't make any sense so you that would support that more. measure not only will i support it but uh... but i hope that it's something that we can get done quickly so you're well, you're planning on making it a priority i am I want to continue this conversation. I think it's important that we do that and that you have this opportunity and ability to, to speak. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. We'll be right back.